Good evening from the state of Kuwait. Welcome to the 7 o'clock news for a Thursday, the 18th of December 2014. I am Dania Badran with the headlines for tonight. The National Assembly adopts a host of recommendations mainly purposed to stem the tide of uncontrollably to dwindling oil prices. A draft resolution setting out a Palestinian timetable for a peace deal with Israel is submitted to the UN Security Council by Jordan. As fighting continues on the Syrian border town of Kobani, a mass grave for more than 230 people is found in Deir al-Zur. Vladimir Putin seeks to ease fears over Russia's economy, insisting that the dramatic fall in the, in the ruble will stabilize. Hello and welcome. His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Sabah Al-Ahmed Al-Jabir Al-Sabah sent a cable of congratulations to His Highness the Emir of the State of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad bin Khalifa bin Hamad Al Thani on the occasion of his country's national day that marks the anniversary of the accession of Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad bin Thani, the founder of Qatar to power. His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah sent a cable of congratulations to His Highness the Emir of the State of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad bin Khalifa bin Hamad Al Thani, on the occasion of his country's national day that marks the anniversary of the accession of Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad bin Al Thani, the founder of Qatar to power. His Highness Sheikh Jaber Al Barak Al Hamad Al Sabah, the Prime Minister, also sent a similar cable. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah sent a cable of congratulations to His Excellency the President of the Republic of Niger, Mahmoudou Isofo, on the occasion of his country's National Day. His Highness uh, the Crown Prince uh, Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah sent a cable of congratulations to His Excellency the President of the Republic of Niger, Mahmoudou Isofo, on the occasion of his country's National Day. His Highness Sheikh Jabir al Barak al Hamad al Sabah, the Prime Minister, also sent a similar cable. The National Assembly adopted a host of recommendations mainly purposed to stem the tide of uncontrollably dwindling oil prices following relevant uh, presentations, presentations by the Minister of Oil and Minister of State for National Assembly Affairs, Dr. Ali Lamir, and the other oil officials. The Assembly recommended continuously promoting Kuwait oil, ensuring available world markets, overhauling the oil sector and taking every possible step to transfer Kuwait into an oil industry hub. It also advised carrying out all oil projects that are intended to update local oil industries, cutting production costs, uh, relation retain Kuwaiti efficient employees in the oil sector and use of the help of the private sector in revamping the oil sector in line with the build, operate and transfer system, resolving political differences with other countries on the oil fields and employing a training Kuwaitis, training Kuwaitis in the oil sector adopting strategic alternatives to state resources, reducing reliance on oil were also among measures advised by the MPs during a parliamentary session held today to discuss several issues, primarily the current fall in oil prices. Furthermore, fresh uh, political and diplomatic methods need to be created in order to ease out the fallout of uncontrollable dip in international oil prices. Addressing the session, Dr. Lamer said Kuwait's current oil production exceeds 2.8 million barrels per day, while world oil supplies are estimated at roughly 96 million barrels per day. On the suspension of oil production in Khavji joint oil field, the minister said it was due to technical reasons efforts were being exerted in order to resume production there. Asked if the present fall in oil prices could lead to a drop in pay and bonuses in the oil sector, he confirmed that the salaries and benefits of all oil employees would remain intact. 
His Highness Sheikh Jabir al-Mbarak al-Hamad al-Sabah, the Prime Minister, today received the Atif Palace, the Chairperson and Board of Directors of Kuwait Association for Protecting Public Funds. His Highness, the Premier, stressed the importance of public associations and their social role, as well as raising awareness about overspending and the spirit of responsibility at all public institutions. His Highness also affirmed the government's keenness in backing legislations, mechanisms, and procedures that help fight corruption and protect public funds. The state of Qatar today celebrates its national day, which coincides with the anniversary of establishing the Qatari state by its founder, Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed Al Thani, in December 18th of, of 1878. Through the years, Qatar has realized numerous achievements in all fields and became a real modern country that has acquired its international status today. While the state of Kuwait shares the celebrations with Qatar on this day, it remembers with great appreciation the historic role of the state of Qatar against the aggression of the ousted Iraqi regime supporting the Kuwaiti cause until reaching victory and liberation. The state of Kuwait, led by His Highness Demir Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmad Al Jabir Al Sabah, wishes Qatar further prosperity and progress. Jordan presented an Arab draft resolution on Palestine today to the UN Security Council while Israeli forces on the ground practice more violations and provocations in Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. From Ramallah, Fatima Abdul Karim has this report. The Arab bloc formally presented through Jordan the Palestinian Arab draft resolution to the United Nations 15-member Security Council today. The resolution is expected to get nine votes to approve it for further discussion, only after the first 24 hours. The resolution bluntly calls for an end of the Israeli occupation on Palestinian territories by 2017, while abstaining from taking any unilateral decisions and actions by both parties. Well, the next step is immediately negotiating it in the membership. It's now uh, on the table of every member, and the, 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 the Security Council will meet. But we will insist on voting on it. I think we have the nine or ten votes without any problem. The question will remain whether the Americans will veto. Meanwhile, what is happening on the ground is threatening all efforts for peace. Israeli soldiers escalated tensions among Palestinian youth, especially in Jerusalem, as they would allow for groups of Jewish extremist settlers to raid into Al-Aqsa Mosque compound and provoke Muslims and Arabs in the old city, which led to clashes and arrests. Jerusalemites said they are aware that Israel is trying to pull the scene into a cycle of violence and kill the chances for peace. The Israeli attack on Al-Aqsa Holy Mosque is ongoing. We are still seeing raids by settlers on daily basis, and the Israeli policy to divide Al-Aqsa Mosque is still threat. Therefore, we are still seeing complications in the situation. The Israeli soldiers also provoked confrontations in Hebron and villages near Ramallah yesterday, while it arrested four Palestinians in the past two days. Many Palestinian voices say they are aware that Israel is trying to blow all covers provided for a peaceful settlement. And meanwhile, it is pulling the Palestinian territories into a theater for settler violence and military intervention. Fatma Abdul Karim, Kuwait TV, Ramallah, Palestine. Thank you, Fatma. A new explosion was reported today in the Syrian town of Kobani as the fighting against the so-called Islamic State continued. Kobani is being defended by Kurdish fighters with the help of airstrikes by a U.S.-led coalition. The airstrikes appear to have had some effect in halting the IS group's onslaught on the town. Elsewhere, Kurdish forces launched an operation to retake the town of Sinjar in northwest Iraq after coalition planes pounded positions overnight. 
The Peshmerga fighters made the gains against the IS throughout the day, driving the militants out of at least eight sub-districts in the Zumar area east of Sinjar. If the Peshmerga succeed in recapturing the town, it would open up a corridor to Sinjar Mountain where hundreds of minority Yazidis have been besieged by the IS militants since August. The bodies of more than 230 people believed to have been killed by the IS militants were found in a mass grave in eastern Syria. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said that they were thought to be members of a tribe that fought the IS in the Al Zur province in the summer. Last month, the UN said it had received reports of a massacre there in August. Investigators said it appeared to have been per perpetrated by the IS in a struggle for control of oil resources near the town of Mohassan. The killings were reported to have taken place after negotiations between the two sides broke down. Jordanian Prime Minister Abdullah Ansour today arrived in Baghdad on a one-day official visit. Ansour delivered a written message from the Jordanian King Abdullah II to Iraqi President Fouad Masoum regarding the strong relations between the two countries. The message tackles ways to enhance coordination and consultation on issues of common concern and addresses the wave of extremism and ways to counter terrorist organizations and movements. Ansour was received at the airport by Prime Minister Haider Al Abadi. The two leaders held talks during which they discussed bilateral relations and issues of joint interest. Pakistani teachers, students and paramedics staged, staged protests in the southern city of Karachi today in a show of solidarity against the deadly attack on an army public school in Peshawar where 148 people were killed by Taliban insurgents. At least 132 students and nine staff members were killed on Tuesday when Taliban gunmen broke into the school and opened fire in the bloodiest massacre the country has seen for years. Pakistani students who survived the Taliban attack returned to the school today. Students from various tribes, uh, tribal areas also rallied outside the school. Services and marches were being held across the country today in solidarity with the families of the victims. Russian President Vladimir Putin today sought to ease fears over his country's economy, insisting that the dramatic fall in the ruble will stabilize. Speaking at his end-of-year news conference, which lasts, uh, lasted over three hours, he blamed the outside for factors for the currency hitting an all-time low. However, he admitted Russia's central bank could have acted more swiftly. Russia is on the verge of recession due to falling oil prices and sanctions over its role in the Ukraine crisis. But the president denied pursuing an aggressive foreign policy and accused the U.S. and the EU of conspiring to weaken Russia. Although the ruble strengthened today, the currency fell strongly in recent days, causing fears of greater economic uh, troubles to Moscow. Kenya's parliament erupted into chaos today after opposition members uh, tore up the day's order papers in protest against a controversial security bill. Parliamentary speaker was forced to adjourn for half hour, but when the session resumed, fighting broke out. Journalists were barred from the parliament's press gallery and the live television transmission was discontinued. Outside the parliament building, riot police arrested a number of protesters who tried to stage a sit-in trying to occupy the parliament. A new security bill was one of the reasons that led to the disruption of the session. 
as opposition called it a reintroduction of a police state. Human rights groups, uh, media and the Kenya's main opposition coalition have opposed the changes to the security laws, saying they will curb fundamental freedoms enshrined in the Constitution. The National Council for Culture, Arts and Letters hosted a seminar entitled The Acquisition of Modernity in the National Library of Kuwait on the occasion of the conclusion of Kuwait's participation in the 14th International Architecture Exhibition at the Venice Biennale. Heba Abdurrahman was there and has more details. Under the title Acquiring Modernity, the National Council for Culture, Arts and Letters, or NCCAL, organized a specialized seminar at Kuwait's National Library. The seminar came on the occasion of the conclusion of Kuwait's participation in the 14th International Architecture Exhibition that was recently held at the Venice Pinale. And so pa parallel to our pavilion, we also did a joint installation with the Nordic Pavilion. And... Um, for those of you who don't know how Venice, the Venice Biennial is set up, there's two main venues where the exhibitions take place. In our research, has picked or certain types of buildings to illustrate different aspects of modernity and how, the, how Kuwait has reacted to them. For instance, we have the Kuwait Fund headquarters by TAC on the left-hand side. And then on the right, you see these isolated um, marketplaces that are um, only connected through parking. 1980-1991 was a really, uh, a really strong decade for that influenced and halted the development of Kuwait. You had the stock market crash in 1982, and with that ended the golden period. A number of engineering offices participated in the event, such as the Arab Consulting Engineers Office, architect company and house Islamic relics represented by a number of talented architects. The speakers pointed out that the architectural project implementation would take a long time in Kuwait as a result of amendments extending procedures for many years and shifting projects to unused studies. On 6th of June 2014, the Kuwait Pavilion at Libinale di Venisa 14th International Architecture Exhibition opened with the restaging of an event that took place three decades earlier. With the title Acquiring Modernity, the National Council for Culture, Arts and Letters, or NCCAL, marked Kuwait's participation in the 14th International Architecture Exhibition that was recently held in Italy by hosting a number of experts in the field of architecture. From the National Library of Kuwait, I am Heba Abdurrahman reporting for English News. Thank you, Heba. At the end of this week's trading at Kuwait Stock Exchange, all indices bounced back from losses of earlier sessions this week. KSX 15 recorded 998.22 points, gaining 25.59 points. The price index ended trading at nearly 6,230 points, earning 114.46 points, and the weighted index closed at 416.81 points, rising by 8.19 points. For a chance to see our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Kuwait News. Before we end, here's a quick reminder of today's headlines. The National Assembly adopts a host of recommendations mainly purposed to stem the tide of uncontrollably dwindling oil prices. A draft resolution setting out a Palestinian timetable for a peace deal with Israel is submitted to the UN Security Council by Jordan. As fighting continues on the Syrian border town of Kobani, a mass grave for more than 230 people is found in the Earl Zur. Vladimir Putin seeks to ease fears over Russia's economy, insisting that the dramatic fall in the ruble will stabilize.